Hi, and welcome to At BCPS In Depth. I'm Jody Wicks. Well, spring is here, the flowers are in bloom, the days are getting longer, and it's time to get out and about. The countdown to the end of school is on, but wait, there's still lots going on in BCPS. So let's check out what's on our show. Diversity, it's everywhere. And BCPS has certainly taken steps to celebrate and embrace the many cultures that make up our county. And in addition, we've stepped up our efforts to recruiting teachers that reflect that diversity as well. World Day for Cultural Diversity was hosted at Dundalk High School. Students, staff, and families celebrated the diversity of the many countries, cultures, and languages represented in Baltimore County Public Schools. The purpose is to um, bring people together, uh, create um, better understanding of each other and of um, knowing other cultures and how we all are in many ways the same people to just appreciate um, different cultures that we have here in America. It was amazing. I wish it happens again because we get to know each other more and more and like we get to meet new people again and again and get them to know more about us and our culture. World Day for Cultural Diversity had ethnic performances such as dancing and singing. Families and friends also enjoyed international cuisine such as Asian, Middle Eastern, and Latin American food. The Magnet Office, Parent University, and much more were present at the event in order to keep the ESOL families informed about all the resources that are available to them at BCPS. I enjoyed uh, the welcoming ceremony with the Puerto Rican singers, the teachers, and the dancing with the students here at Dundalk. I feel like it brought people's attention to the event, and it was very nice to see people come out and celebrate the culture. Okay, so I like the dancing of the Nepali performance, and I also like the, the singing of the, Egypt, the Egyptian guy. I also saw new people from different countries and different culture, and I saw the amazing outfits that they wore. It was amazing. I actually love it. The evening turned out to be a success, drawing a large crowd and showcasing diversity within BCPS. I just want everyone to be proud of their heritage and celebrate it and appreciate it and not be afraid of uh, what customs or what um, traditions they bring with them. And um, we already see that in Baltimore County there is better tolerance, but um, we need to keep it going. Merriam-Webster defines diversity as the condition of having or being composed of differing elements, particularly among people of different races and cultures within an organization. Baltimore County Public Schools was at the Loyola Graduate Center in Timonium for the first ever diversity job fair. The purpose? To seek teachers of color. Right now we're 63 percent students of color that um, make up Baltimore County Public Schools. However, our teaching staff is over 80 percent white. As a result of that, we decided to have a diversity job fair wherein we're having teachers of color or potential teachers of color come to Baltimore County to hear about some of the fascinating things that we have going on here in Baltimore County Public Schools to help make our teaching population more representative of what our student population looks like as well. We're having more and more diverse student populations and it's really important for our students to be able to see themselves and their teachers, but to really have mentors, to have someone they can relate to and see themselves in and say, you know what, I could be a teacher or I could be anybody I wanted to be. Future teachers and staff had the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with principals, administrators, and other staff to discuss future opportunities with BCPS. A wide range of offices are here today to speak with the candidates because we wanted them to understand how important it is for us to develop a diverse teacher workforce here in Baltimore County Public Schools. It's important to all of us, and it's important to, to all of us to unite together to make sure that we help prepare these applicants, support them and nurture them so that they understand not only what um, we're embracing here in our system and why um, having a diverse workforce is important to us, but how we're going to support them once they come on board with us. 
The Diversity Job Fair had a unique range of activities, discussions, and insight to provide information for potential BCPS teachers. The principals that were in that workshop were talking about diversity and were talking about how impactful it is to have teachers on their staff that represent their students. So I was discussing how when I was in school, I uh, was went from being a part of the majority to being the minority and um, how it impacted me as a student to not have teachers um, that look like me. And some attendees got more than what they expected. I think it's a great event. It's definitely more than I thought it was going to be because being going to other job fairs, it's really not this organized and it's not full of all these resources and information. Um, so I love that there were different breakout sessions going over different facets of the school system because it, me coming into it, it gives me a nice foundation sort of start. I think for our first attempt, I think it's been very successful in speaking with candidates and being able to um, see that people are interested in Baltimore County. This is a county that is focused the most on diversifying its workforce. This is a county that's focused the most on addressing the equity gaps. We look forward to new teachers and staff shaping a more diverse BCPS. Impacting a child's life in just a small way can make a huge difference as they develop into adulthood. And for that, we appreciate what our teachers are doing each day to nurture and grow our future. Cause, class. Yes, yes, yes. What is cause and effect? What did you guys talk about? Teachers are one of the most instrumental people who help the growth of our BCPS students. They don't just teach, but they inspire our students to be problem solvers. And then you should be thinking about this question before we start our research. While all teachers are caring to me, one teacher stands out the most, Miss Clark. She stands out to me because she doesn't rush us into what she's doing. She gives us time to understand what she has to say, and she's an overall fun teacher. The teacher who inspired me to teach was my algebra teacher, Mrs. Hughes. Uh, she was very helpful and made sure that each one of her students understood. I adopted that with my teaching practices because I think there's nothing more important than making sure students leave your class knowing more than they did when they entered. I can think of a lot of things that make you special. My mom is the one who inspired me to be a teacher. I can remember when I was little, I would always beg to go into her classroom whenever I could. And she was one of those teachers that everybody loved, everybody wanted to have, and she still is. She made really great connections with her kids, and I knew that I wanted to be that kind of influence in children's lives as well. As you're looking at that real world problem. The quality of the teacher is probably the single most important thing in terms of student achievement. There have been many studies that show that that's the case and I've seen it firsthand throughout my career. For instance, if you have a high quality JROTC program that wins the county championship 13 years in a row, I can assure you, you have high quality JROTC instruction happening. My Marine Corps instructor, his name is Gunnery Sergeant Allen, has really helped develop me as a leader for the past couple of years that I've been here. They've really helped prepare me to be of service for my community, state, and nation as I am going into the Navy in July. My youngest is uh, an eighth grader now at Cockeysville Middle School, and we've been in uh, Baltimore County Public Schools since kindergarten. And we've just had a wonderful experience with, uh, with the teachers uh, in, in all of these schools. Uh, I, I, I just can't speak highly enough of them and I, you know, some of them are just, in my book, they are, they're all heroes, but some of them are just superheroes. They've been absolutely phenomenal. Now, every student is probably not gonna be intrinsically motivated by every course he or she takes, but every student deserves that hook to come to school. And an enthusiastic, dynamic, well-prepared teacher can be that hook that gets students to come to school. As you get into a real-world problem, nobody's gonna tell you, you must use substitution to solve this. You have to use your critical thinking and decide which is the easiest way for me to get it done. BCPS certainly is proud of its inspiring teaching staff. But now, taking it to another level, this teacher was recognized nationally for his passion for cars, kids, and of course, teaching too. Well, I became an educator because I really wanted to share my passion for cars with younger people. But before entering the classroom, Rob, which he prefers to be called, served in the Marine Corps. 
worked as a mechanic, shop foreman, and facilities manager for over 20 plus years before coming to Milford Mill Academy as the automotive teacher. There was an opportunity to teach and I don't know if it was just one of those things that was meant to be, but all the stars aligned and I came down and interviewed and was, I, I didn't get a mile from the school when I left the interview and was told that I had the job. And I've been here ever since and I, I, I thoroughly enjoy what I do and there's a great, great deal of satisfaction of teaching and it's uh, sometimes, sometimes it's not work. This facility is run as a business. Uh, the students get docked grade points for not being on time for work. Uh, the students need to learn tool organization. The students need to learn uh, social skills. When a vehicle's done, they have to deliver the work order back to the customer, explain the repairs, and answer any questions. There's also, we follow a very methodical approach towards safety and also towards education and how it fits in with the automotive industry. The thing I like about this program is that it's meant for everybody. It's not just specific people with specific talents. You can come in here with no knowledge of cars whatsoever and leave out with at least the minor things you need to know to work at a standard shop. In addition to learning the mechanics of a vehicle, these students are also learning life skills from Mr. Carter. It's hands-on, and you actually learn how to do stuff when you come in the classroom. So your 10th grade year, you learn. And Mr. Carter, he's just a good person, a kind spirit, soul, and he will come in and he will like tell you, oh, this is how you're gonna do it, this and the third. I want you to follow my footsteps. Don't be like me, be better than me. And it's just like, he's just a great, he's like a father figure for me, and I just like love him to death. Mr. Carter is, he's very, very different. He, he looks at us as his family, his own children. He will do anything for us, no matter what the cost to his job. He believes that I can't is never the answer. He's always thinking that you should, even if you can't, even if you think you can't do it, you should at least try. And with that care and compassion, Mr. Carter was named the National Teacher of the Year by Magnet Schools of America. I would like to tell everybody that that was the highlight of my life, but uh, to be honest, I, I, I think what was more personally satisfying for me was the fact that the, 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 when the awards were being issued, I was having some health issues. And when all the people from all over the United States came to visit and tour our facility, unfortunately I wasn't here. And I have gotten so many emails and texts about how professional my students handled themselves in my absence. That was my reward. That, that was my trophy. Uh, but as an educator, we're reflections of our students. And if we don't produce a good product, we're not, nobody's lining you up for an award, nobody's talking about you. So it's just, in the end of the day, it's still all about them. And winning an award is very humbling and it's nice and I am so, so appreciative. But more than anything else, I'm appreciative of the fact that it brought light to all the good things that this program and CTE programs in general do. Do you love art? Well, our next story is one on dedication, inspiration, and the love of art. Well, for 30 years, I've been greeting them in the hallway. So when they're brought right to the hallway outside your door, there's a greeting, good morning, how are you? Welcome to the art room. And that was for 30 years. But this year, I started something different where I shake hands with every child. So even though the, the germ quotient has gone up and the cold quotient has increased and, and illness a lot, so there's, and it really has surprisingly, but it, it matters. So every child gets a handshake and a greeting or a fist bump or a high five or something. So they're greeted personally at the door before they come into the room uh, because it, it, it sets a tone and, and it, it, it makes every child feel welcome personally. I engage curiosity by either when after, after a, 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 an objective is read and students are presented with whatever the, the goal is for the day, 
don't give them, don't give them too much information. Uh, put enough up on the board that arouses enough interest. Uh, present just enough information. Uh, present it in a fun way. Uh, make them ask the questions. Uh, present it in a, in a manner that's exciting. Maybe add humor. Call on the ones whether their hands are up or not and then call on the ones whose hands are up and continue to praise. And I think automatically it's almost like a domino thing where they will see one another getting praised or acknowledged, whether it's something tangible or a pat on the back or a thumbs up, and then it will automatically fuel that little fire and then everyone will then pitch in and the whole dialogue then begins. So the question and answer and the curiosity is then peaked and then the, the rousing excitement builds, I suppose and the dialogue then ensues on its own. But I feel in here, you can't reward children too much. If they're working and you're setting a climate of, of positivity, and this may be the one room, this may be the one room where children are succeeding out of the rest of their five hour day. And if they're working and get a stamp, answering questions and get a certificate, following directions while they're working and earn a visitor from over there, a desk guest, um, get a sticker if they gave a good answer. I don't feel there can be too much so that there's a class reward or a table reward. It's constant and it's steady. And I think that, uh, that serves two purposes. At this age, it keeps me on my toes. And at that age, it lets them know that they're being rewarded for something that they've done that's the right thing to do. And I think we need to reward them for what the right thing to do is because then inherently it teaches them to not do the wrong thing. I've always felt this is the one area, the one area where I felt was a strength. When all else has failed, and Lord knows it has, con the connection is the one thing that I thought I had going for me. The connection piece, that's something that I'm confident that I, I can offer. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to leave this profession and not get that across to people. But that's what my career has been about. We know Sheldon has painted a fabulous retirement. Well, that does it for this edition of At BCPS In-Depth. If you have any story ideas, comments, or suggestions, contact us at bcps-tv at bcps.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and with the BCPS Now mobile app. Until next time, I'm Jody Wicks. Thanks for watching.